Christianity was stolen from Africa and I got the proof right here. Dree.Will says Christianity was stolen from Africa and changed to be weaponized to enslave black and brown people. Y'all are worshiping two different gods. <sighs> Whenever I hear somebody make this claim, I know for sure that they haven't done any scholarly research. First of all, what does it even mean that somebody stole something but then changed it? That would mean it's not the same thing. If we were comparing the gods of Egypt to the gods of Rome and Greece, then I could say, yeah, it does look like there was a little bit of borrowing across those different cultures. Because the concept is pretty much the same. You got a whole bunch of different gods doing a whole bunch of really bad stuff and making humans subservient to them. That's not at all what you have in Christianity. In Christianity, you have the God of the Old Testament who creates people, loves them, continues to forgive them and provide for them even though they continue to rebel against him over and over and over and over again. And because God is God and he knows that humans are gonna human, he says, you know what, I got y'all. What I'm gonna do is send my son to live a sinless life and to die the death that you all deserve, but to redeem you for free. That's it. All you gotta do is turn away from your sin, change your attitude about sin and turn to the true God and he'll offer you eternal life. Simple as that. For whatever reason, that has never been good enough for a lot of people living throughout human history. Instead of accepting a free gift, which I still don't understand, who don't like free gifts? Y'all rather sacrifice goats and sometimes your own children. Because this is the thing about false religions. Even cults within Christendom that claim to be Christian but really ain't Christian, like your Mormons and your Jehovah's Witnesses. They got bodies in the basement, yo. When people abandon the gospel and follow false gods and false worldviews, people get hurt. So Live Science posted this article back in 2017 it talks about 25 cultures that practice human sacrifice. Y'all, pretty much everybody all over across the whole world was on here. The Incas, the Mayans, people in Peru, people in Asia, people all over the ancient Middle East. Even Stonehenge, y'all. They were sacrificing people at Stonehenge. Now let's compare that to what the Bible says about human sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Key word, living. Back in Deuteronomy 30, verse 19, it says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. I said all that to say Yahweh was not instructing the people in the Bible to do what the Orishas was instructing people to do. And I'm sorry, but to define 2,000 years of church history by 400 years of slavery, which is on the tail end of that historical record is wild. Because as I've already demonstrated on TikTok time and time again, Christianity was in North Africa since the first century. And one of the reasons we know for sure that Christianity was already thriving on the continent of Africa is because we have records of people like the Silitan Martyrs who gave up their lives for their faith as early as 180 AD, which is the second century, but that shows you that Christianity had already had to be there if people was already willing to die for this. Meanwhile, you got people like Tipu Tip, who's responsible for the enslavement of thousands of Africans on the East Coast. And I mean, this is so recent, we got a real life photograph of this man. Tipu's legal name was Hamed bin Muhammad El Merjebi. All right, I pulled this article from Cambridge. It's called The Life of Tipu Tip. In the last section, it says, Lang doesn't shy away from the controversies of Tipu Tip's life. As Lang shows, Tipu Tip gained repute among coastal Muslims as a visionary political leader, but he became notorious in European circles for his role in the East African slave trade, and he consequently emerged as an international symbol of the perfidy of Arab slave traders. Meanwhile, all the way back in the Old Testament, Exodus 21, it says, whoever steals a man and sells him and anyone found in possession of him shall be put to death. For the punishment for forced slavery in the Old Testament was death. I said all that to say and reiterate for the 5th 11th time that if y'all think these other religions mean you some good, <laughs> you've got your head in the sand baby. False doctrine hurts people. This is why I'm very pro people really understanding what Christianity is and what it is not. Because when you don't understand what it is, you get cults again, like Jehovah's Witnesses and Black Hebrew Israelites and Seventh-day Adventists and Mormons. And then when you abandon it completely, you get people like Orishas or even atheism. Because let us never forget that it was the atheistic evolutionary scientist who took a man from the Congo and placed him in an exhibit in the New York Bronx Zoo. I'm trying to tell y'all the world without Jesus is a scary place, but y'all go off.